Hey, this is Dan from userspice.com and I am particularly excited about today's video because we're going to be talking about Node Red and MQTT. And uh, I believe these things can change your life. It's not like the things they do that it's, that it's the only tool out there that could ever do these things, but it's my favorite tool to do a lot of these things primarily because it's just really visual and it's quick and it's reliable. And so, um if you've seen my previous videos, I've showed you how to install Node-RED and I've showed you how to install MQTT. Um, it's easy to install on PC, Mac, Linux. Um, I like to put it on a Raspberry Pi because I like to have it on a cheap, low power computer that's running all the time. Um, two of my favorite choices are the Raspberry Pi Zero, um, which this board, this says $35, but you can get this board at Micro Center for five bucks. Um, this includes everything you could ever possibly want, cases and power supplies and USB hubs and adapters and all that kind of stuff. The other option that I like even a little bit better is the Orange Pi Zero. And I like it because it has this full-size Ethernet port and this full-size USB port, which make it just really great for a little home server. But no matter how you install it, the point is you should install it. And so we're going to take a look at a few different things. What I've done here is I have created a very basic Arduino sketch. And what you'll see here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the sketch. I, I didn't really uh, spend a lot of time making the sketch. So what I'm doing is I've got a uh, an Arduino Mega hooked up to an Ethernet adapter. You could do the same thing over Wi-Fi. But I've basically given an IP address to the um, to the Arduino. I've set the address of my Raspberry Pi, and then this callback function is usually pretty much the same on all of these uh, example sketches. You connect to the Ethernet, you connect to the pub sub client, which is what does the Mosquito. Um, if for some reason you disconnect, you need a way to reconnect. And then, um, yeah, starting serial and just putting a few little things to get the Ethernet set up. And then basically what I'm doing here is, this is garbage code, but what I'm doing is taking a random number between 100 and 1000 and I am publishing that with a topic of YouTube and that's where this is going to come in. So I'm going to minimize this and you're going to see that if I go in here to my MQTT, this is one of these MQTT in nodes. So what I did is I drug that in here and you double click it and it's got my MQTT settings, uh, you know, that this is on the Raspberry Pi and all that kind of stuff, the port number. And then it's looking for the topic of YouTube and anything after YouTube. And so what happens is right now we're just sending it to the serial debugger. And so you can see if I deploy and clear this out, about every 10 or 15 seconds, we're going to get a random number between 100 and 1,000. And so, um, again, we don't care about the random number. It's just simulating the fact that we're getting data from the Arduino. So what, what are some of the things you can do with that? Well, there's an extension I showed you how to install it in a previous video called Node Red Dashboard. And so one of the cool things you could do, you could come over here and you could grab this gauge and I'm gonna pump this data from the MQTT in to the gauge. And now I'm gonna double click this and let's make it, we're gonna make it kind of big. Again, one of my least favorite things to do on Node Red. We're gonna make that big. And then we're going to set the range of this from zero to a thousand and we're going to call it random number. Okay. So now I hit done and deploy. And when I come over here, immediately this gauge pops up and we're given a UI. So if you were doing something like a temperature sensor or something like that, you could make a super easy user interface that would show you accurately and quickly and without you having to update or refresh any pages, um, what the data is coming in. And so you can make these and you can make just multiple screens and all kinds of fun stuff with this. So the Node-RED dashboard is definitely one of my favorite features. The next thing I really like to do is that you can picture having tons and tons of data points flying around Node-RED and all these different things coming down the side. And what if you wanted to know um, let's just say if this was a building and you wanted to know if there's ever a building below this certain temperature, I want to set an alarm off or I want to do something like that. You can do these things like a switch statement and you can do these statements in other languages. So they should look relatively familiar if you know something about programming. But what we're going to do is we're going to say that if this is less than, since we're, we have a big data set, if it's less than 499, we're going to do this. And then if it's, we'll just say equal to 500, we'll do this. And then if it is greater than 500, which again, we're very rarely gonna trigger the other one. Uh, if it's greater than 500, 
then we're going to do this. And so now what happens is all of a sudden we have these three points on here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, there's probably prettier ways to do this, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to make these three little things here and I'm going to drag one to each of them. So right now what's happening is if you look over on the side, this is the message payload and this is the message topic. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change the payload. Again, it's going to come through here, work on the gauge perfectly fine, but we're going to come in here and change the payload to less. And then on this one, because again, we're looking at here less, equal, and greater. So on this one, we're going to go equal. And let's give it a bunch of exclamation points because it's like a 1 in 900 chance that that happens. And then we're going to do this one, and we're going to put greater um, like that. Now, what we can do is we can come back here to our um, thing, and let's just say we'll take this one. And regardless of what happens, we want to send it back to our dashboard. Now, you could just as easily trigger an alarm. You could send an email, and we'll show you about that. But um, uh, let's put logic here. We'll just put logic, and we'll change this here, and we're going to make this, I don't know. We'll just, let's do this one auto. Leave that auto. So if I, if I hit that um, and hit deploy, and I come over here, now as every one of these things goes in, we're going to get this logic of whether we're less than, equal to, greater than, um, and so it's kind of cool. Again, so now all of a sudden it's greater. And so all of this logic is just happening on the fly. And so, again, there are other things you could do with that. So let's just say if I were to come in here and say, well, you know, this is the temperature of a building. Let's see. I haven't, I haven't looked at this one in a while. But um, email. Okay. So you could come in here and you could go this one and you could double click it and put in your smtp settings for your gmail you, know, you put 587 and smtp.gmail.com put in your real email address your username password use tls and all of a sudden you would get an email that would tell you that hey man this thing is below 500 that's important you need to know about it or maybe you know you're playing a game and if the score is above something you might want you know, to go ahead and tweet out the fact that the score is above something. And in fact, like you could come in here and there is a, uh, let's see here, I think there's one called rate limit. Um, but there are things like that that you could sit there and, and put in rate limits so that maybe it would only tweet once an hour or things like that. There's all kinds of different stuff that you can do where you can take this one little data point that's coming in and you could split the logic out to do all kinds of other things. The next thing I really like to do is to um, come over here and play with the palette manager. And we're going to look at, there's over 2,000 other modules that you can add besides the things that are on the left now. And so we're going to install the A word one. And I'm going to do this one called Contrib Local. And it'll take a minute to install, but that's okay. You're not going to get a ton of feedback. I guess you could sit here and look at the logs. Uh, but you know, we're just going to let it install and let it bebop around. And then you'll see that it came in here. And sometimes it's a little hard to find it, but this one just seems to be right here on the side. So this one's really cool because it doesn't require you to do much configuration. Uh, you have to turn one little thing on in your app. But basically, you can come in here and you can give this a unique name. And I'm going to call it something like water management. And then just for the heck of it, I'll drag a debug thing in here. And what you're going to do, and I'm not going to do it on the on the video itself, but you're going to say A-L-E-X-A, -E discover devices. And the funny thing is, it's not going to matter if she finds something or not. It'll most likely work even if she says she didn't found, find anything. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to come right back. Okay, easy peasy. So what you do, you drag this in and you tell her to discover the devices. And then it's just as simple as saying, Alexa, turn on water management. Alexa, turn off water management. And she just sends a message of on or off. So you could send that out via MQTT or something like that. But the next thing we're going to look at is sending data from Node-RED back to the Arduino. And so um, one of the cool things is that it's basically instantaneous. And so we're going to um, 
drag in a time this little injector thing and just to take a second one of the things that that happens here is you can picture node red like a bunch of dominoes and so imagine that you hit this domino over and one domino triggers the next one so this comes down to here and triggers that and then it just stops and then this triggers this which triggers this which triggers this and so this idea of you need something on the left side to start the flow of going to the right side and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a string here and we're just going to say hello arduino i uh, know and we're going to hit done and then we're going to come into this um this node here and this is made to receive an mqtt message and we are going to hit um the topic of response and i'm going to give it a QoS of zero, which is means that it's not that important of a message. Like you can take it sweet old time delivering it, but so um, you can see it injected hello Arduino. And the the thing that we got the response from is if you come in here and you look and you see this thing um, subscribed to the topic of response. And so there's this idea of you publish and you can publish on whatever topic you want, and you can subscribe and you can subscribe to as many topics as you want. But you can see that over here on the serial monitor, it received um, on the topic response and the message it received was hello Arduino. And that came in from Node Red. And so the idea is you can send temperatures, you can send data, you can send whatever you want back and forth to the Arduino over this MQTT protocol. The last thing I want to go over in this video is a little hard to visualize, but if you've used an Arduino Uno, Mega, Nano, Pro Mini, any of those typical Arduino devices, one thing you may or may not be aware of is that they don't have the horsepower to do HTTPS connections. They literally just don't have the RAM to negotiate the handshakes and the security key exchanges and things like that that need to happen in order to make a secure connection. So one of the most powerful things, and if you don't use it for anything else, one of the most powerful things you can do is to set up everything on your network to talk to your Raspberry Pi. And then if you want the information to go somewhere outside of your network, like a Blink server or something like that, to send it from the Raspberry Pi to the cloud server instead of trying to send it right from each Arduino to the cloud server. Because if you send it from the Arduino, it's gonna be in the clear. It's gonna be over HTTP. Anybody can sniff it. Anybody can go back and figure out what IP address it came from and what data you're sending. and it it's really easy for them to spoof data and send fake data and all that kind of stuff. But if you go from the local server over the um, Raspberry Pi, this is a secure tunnel. You can allow this to connect to this server securely and all of the data from your own network will be transmitted securely to the cloud. And so the cool thing is if you're on Wi-Fi, you get the built-in security of Wi-Fi, meaning that if nothing else, you would need your Wi-Fi password to be able to spy on the traffic. Or, you know, if you're in your house and you're sending stuff with an Arduino Mega over Ethernet, it may not be HTTPS, but you would still have to physically be connected to your network in order to see the traffic. So that's where this idea of, of this thing being a bridge or being a tunnel to the cloud is a super powerful concept. So that's all I'm going to do in this video. I'll have five more tips in the next one. Have a great day.